Look, it looks like it's just us two again. <laughs> when we last left off, Eric's character had killed two innocent men. <laughs> they weren't innocent. Thank you very much. They were coming to check out they were... an issue of trespassing, and they got blown out of a tall, tall tower. They were trying <laughs> to stop the will of uh, whatever... Guitar Hero character. <laughs> Here. <laughs> no, it was. I don't remember the um. Uh, deity. The deity. Yeah. Well, who are you going to bring this time? I'm bringing Teofanus Mercon. <laughs> Would you like to spell that? No. <laughs> uh, I can't do the little accent mark above the E, but it is, it's that. It's Yo! that E in his uh, last name. Uh, he is a half-elf divine sorcerer. Um, and he's, he's just an all-around good boy. Um... That uh, that I want to test out before I bring him to Strahd. Uh, apparently, Kyrie is still dead. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me heal her real fast. I once named a horse Theophanes. Okay. Pronounce it again. Yes. <laughs> Teophanes. Oh, okay. I I didn't process that you were trying to do your Cyrus voice. <laughs> I thought you were just trying to be some weird greasy swindler. <laughs> you mean he's not that all the time? <laughs> yeah. uh, pretty much describes Brian. <laughs> mm. So once you resurrect Kyrene, that's who you're playing? Yes, she's now, she's healed. <laughs> she's recovered. Do, do you need me to spell out her name for you? No, I got it. Thanks, though. Are, are you going to remember the name? <laughs> yep. <laughs> are you sure? I've encountered that one enough. I've got it down. Okay. Chances I remember it. Low. Nice. Listen here, Ramiro. <laughs> That's going to be my Cyrus impression from now on. I'm just going to say, Theo! <laughs> Is that <laughs> all I could say? <laughs> that was better than what you tried to do before. <laughs> You're like, I once named a horse, Theo Fanes. <laughs> That was really good, Eric. Buy a watch? I felt like Dan was standing right next to me. <laughs> the last thing that happened as uh, during the opening ceremony as the night was uh, coming to kind of its close, Diane Delby was shocked to get this letter and you read it and it said she has to return to Torrington that the inn had caught fire. And that the only employees were on duty were on were Mr. Beluskin and Mr. Gumley. Mr. Beluskin was well, but he said they were not able to locate Gumley. And they tried him at home, and they tried finding him, but they couldn't find him. <laughs> Borgra Clark! <laughs> I once named a horse Borg or Clorg. Oh my god. <laughs> Back in Bugbert, my. <laughs> I'm just gonna stop there. <laughs> <laughs> um. She's going to be heading back to Torrington the following morning, actually. Uh. Do you, uh, what's Sybian names? 
that a porn thing? <laughs> oh boy. Go on with what you're saying about <laughs> this told me. <laughs> Anyway, she's going back to Torrington. Uh, you guys are welcome to join her and try to figure out what happened to D Gumley. Okay, in case I have Gumley. What? <laughs> I'm curious about what happened to Gumley. I think that she will... I think that she will. She's a she's a centaur, so she's just gonna pull her own wagon, and um, <laughs> because because you guys have been residents of Torrington's Dolby Inn for so long, and you know <clears throat> the town better than she does, I think she kind of invites you to just ride along with her. Okay. <clears throat> I will gratefully accept. This map of Torrington has been updated. Oh, no, it hasn't. No, no, it has not. Look, it's all being fine. It's all a house. <laughs> Hooray. <clears throat> well, anyway. Uh, the uh, the, Do the Dolby Inn is in... When, when you start to approach it, you can already see the... There's still kind of a, a, a haze... Um, of smoke above it. It's just kind of smoldering right now. And um, the whole thing is black for the most part. And as you get closer, you can see that it's all roped off right now and kind of fenced off, actually. They kind of like put a perimeter of sawhorses around this thing and <laughs> tape and warnings and all this kind of stuff for not touch it. <clears throat> oh, yeah, sawhorses. Oh, <laughs> it's blow. kind of... It's kind of like there's just these like wooden gate things that they put around the perimeter. And it looks like the, once you get closer, you can see that the base of Dolby Inn was kind of intact for the most part. But then um, it looks like the top and the roof and everything, second floor, was all charred and burned and collapsed in on itself. And it's mostly in the back. Um, the entrance is still technically standing and the back is completely fallen down and um, black. And when she sees this, she's extremely disheartened. Um, I think she's going to go fetch whoever the authorities are. Um, she's probably going to run down to the parliament building and... Um, there you go. Thank you. <laughs> Just trying to help. Oh. Everyone's head cannon thanks you. <clears throat> she comes back with the guy that's in charge of um, the fire stuff. I don't know if you'd call it a fire department, but he fire says, stuff. Yes. <laughs> he says. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, she went down last night. It was a brutal, uh, a brutal sight. She's been a staple of this town for a long time. It was very sad to see her go. Unfortunately, we were not able to get here in time to stop the flames. Are you sorry about skating? If see if it was arson. Well. The story as we have it is the two employees were down in the kitchen area. And when they detected that there was something wrong, the shorter one went upstairs. A couple guests came down, they got out of the building, and that's when things collapsed. And have both the boys been found or now? Only the tall gentleman. Well, have you checked the 
rubble for the other one? We haven't really touched it yet because we didn't want to Miss Dolby to uh, uh, be absent from our investigation. We did a we did scan the area and didn't see any bodies, but we haven't checked for arson. I I mean, if it's to adopt to investigate, I don't think you need Miss Dolby there for it. <clears throat> her property, her decision. And she says. <laughs> You were both, you, both of you frequented the Dolby Inn, yes? Yes. You would know if it had any enemies or people who would want to do harm? You know, now that you mention it, there was a strange tall goblin girl I always saw running around... <laughs> No, no, I don't think it's that person. <laughs> I couldn't possibly be the other end. <laughs> they have, <laughs> they've been around for nearly as long as I, well, yeah, the Les, Les Mulligan's been around even longer still. They have never um, lashed out at us or tried to bring us down. And we've always had just friends. What about the prestige? They seem uppity. I suppose I can go ask some questions, find out if they've employed anyone new, if there's been new management. Well, <clears throat> I don't advise any of you to go into that mess. It could be dangerous, but um, I've... Oh, again. <laughs> I've got a busy day ahead of me. I can't, uh, I can't linger. Um, goodbye. <laughs> Oh, no, I really want to sneak in. <laughs> uh, Listen, I have almost finished my vodka, and <laughs> I'm not really in the mood to develop a character on the fly right now, so I'm just going to go. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, thank perfect. you for your help. You've been... <laughs> Great. Just terrific. <laughs> Miss Dolby, do you think that uh, we should investigate the <clears throat> remains? I would uh, be grateful for any help you could provide, especially since you know this town better than I do. Of course, I'm curious to see what might have caused it and what, uh, where the other person is. She um, she kind of draws you out a quick map, jots down an address, and uh, tells you how to reach Daniel Beluskin. She has a book of um, contacts, so she just copies it out of there and hands it to you. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to start the investigation by walking around the Dolby Inn to see if I can find... Anything uh, around the <clears throat> around the property that looks, uh, you know, like a pile of uh, gas-soaked rags that um, <laughs> certain people have used before to burn down other establishments. <laughs> Why don't you roll? Since you already specifically know what you're looking for. Um, I'll let you choose between investigation or perception. Can I get the help action and give advantage? Okay. I assume that he Jesus. tells you kind of what he's on the lookout for, so you're just an extra <clears throat> set of eyes. Yeah. As someone interested in crimes, you make me cringe, Brian. That's <laughs> not how investigations work. <laughs> okay. It's how our investigations work. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Oh no, we can't do the investigation. We have to wait for the owner's permission. <laughs> Honestly, this sense. is fantastic news because said... it means we can do any crimes in Torrington so long as they're <laughs> in our property. I said he'd scan the area right. for bodies. He just didn't want to. 
Hmm, I don't see anything from out here. Good enough for me. <laughs> you know, um, there may be things going on behind the scenes that you don't know. If he's acting funny, maybe there's a reason for it. Well, now I want to investigate him. <laughs> he left already. He's going to go polish <laughs> off his vodka. Why is he um, drinking on the job? <laughs> Why aren't? Why don't you? Well, like, uh, <laughs> yes. uh, I do have a bug. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, what did you guys roll? I uh, did sixteen. Uh, investigation, uh, thirteen. What did you mean by help? Are you uh, adding on to his or something? Uh, I was going to give a uh, allow him advantage because I'm giving him the help action. Uh, help action's a plus two. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you have to roll like a ten or higher and then you give up. Yeah, I, yeah, I got 13. Perfect. So uh, 18 total, Brian. You start walking around the Dolby and, and uh, as I already stated, the front is somewhat intact. <clears throat> kind of kept some of its color and its doorways are still standing. As you walk around to the back, it looks like everything in the back is collapsed in on itself and it's completely blackened and charred, or at least the top layer is. And um, as you start kind of scanning the rubble as you walk along the back, one thing that you notice, um, since you're specifically looking for this, is that the window frames from the second floor... Um, let me pull up the interior map real quick. Fuck, what is the name? Oh, yeah. Uh, let me look it up, Eric. <clears throat> sure. Okay, the same as Kyrie. Did I write your bio? No. Why would I? You guys are familiar with the, f the layout. And room number two, which is on the left corner in the back, you can see that it has one window that was closed, but then the back frame was open. And then room number four, which is in the middle, you can see that window frame, the panel was open. And then on the opposite corner, room number six, you can see that had a window open. Okay, so you said two, three, and six had windows open? <clears throat> And that's what you can see from your perimeter walk, just glancing at this stuff. Okie dokie. But you haven't, like, dug into it or learned anything more detailed or... But there's nothing on, like, the <clears throat> the outside that looks like it's been tampered with at all. You just see those open windows. And, um, and, and as I said, you clear, can see... They're open not broken the all the windows are going to be broken but these um you can tell that the frames had been pushed upwards in okay and uh and you can also see of course that the top part looks much blacker than the bottom part hmm. you would surmise that the fire started on the second floor and then it collapsed on itself gotcha so I'm some kicking ball. That's good to know. It looks like you could wade through this rubble. Um, you would just have to be careful of broken glass and beams and stuff. Okay. Because uh, uh, you'd I'm be ready climbing. To make my way in then. Yeah, you'll be climbing over some piles of uh, charred rubble and stuff, and so you just want to make sure that you're not going to like fall through. <laughs> so why don't you guys do dex checks? Oh man! Oh no! Oh, does Kyrene wear armor at all? No. Okay. Oh, she's uh, a monk. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, dirty twenty. Dex. There. Ooh. Uh, fifteen. Just straight Dex, Brian. <clears throat> um. What's the uh? I guess Acrobatics. 
You can if you have a good acrobatics, but otherwise, yeah, straight decks. Uh, I, I don't, but uh, 19. Um, if I do acrobatics, it's a 23. Okay. Wait. Mine was a 19, so. 23. Yeah, so you're able to uh, very nimbly make your way through this rubble without um, Dude, putting too much. Shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't put too much weight on any one spot and. Uh, as you start picking through this stuff, I'm going to let you hold on to your investigation checks. You're also able to notice that you can kind of, you have to like get some of the uh, the charred roof off and toss it aside and dig through this. And once you do, you're kind of able to see the floor plan of the second floor and how it was laid out. And... Um, there's a lot of bed springs and old tubs and stuff that came crashing down, but you can uh, you can make out the charred flooring. Um, you can kind of see what did they use in there? I guess it would just be like plywood or something. You can kind of see a scorch marks along it, and as you start getting even more intensely looking you can find like bits of rags and stuff and you can basically what you find is that it looks like somebody tied housekeeping towels onto each other to make a rope and from what you can tell it looks like the scorch marks go from one room to the next room to the next room and it's those three rooms that had the windows open it was a hot, hot fire because this is just these black scorch marks. It all, you're going to guess that they probably fueled it somehow. Can I smell the rags? Yeah. Um, Brian, if I'm understanding this correctly, they they made like uh, ropes to escape using these towels, right? That's what you were describing? It could be, but from what you can gather, it looks like these towels made a chain from one, from room two to room four to room six, all of which had their windows open. Oh, they made a chain. Okay, I I misheard. I thought you said that they were like, just tied, um, like in those rooms, not to each other. To each other through the hallway. Oh, well, that's dumb. So what does this rag smell like? Just burn <laughs> charcoal. <laughs> like there the was... finest sandal. <laughs> if there was any fuel, it was burned off of there. Okay. Um, why don't you guys roll me an additional investigation check? Who <laughs> does? Oh no, I got eight. Wait, my. Okay, hold on, my dice tower broke? <laughs> oh no! How'd you do that? Um. The front panel came off. No. Oh! Because it's all like magnetic. Mm. So I just uh, like that panel looks to come off on mine. It's plastic. Yeah. Um. I got a three. <laughs> That's about all you're able to find. Um, <clears throat> it for so from what you can gather, it looks like this was arson. It looks like somebody tried to uh, to run a line of probably fueled rags across the hallway and vent it through these open windows for oxygen, and then. Um, there's no, you don't find any clear direction of how they escaped or who they were. Mm -hmm. The only other <laughs> lead that you can think of is maybe talking to Daniel Bluskin. Um, is there like an attic at all? There was. Um, they used it to fight those vampires a while back, so it would have been accessible through the maid's closet. Um, I want to check if it's still up there because, uh, Mr. Useless that we talked to said that, um, Gumley was running upstairs, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. <clears throat> the attic and everything came 
crashing down. So unfortunately, it's uh, it's here in the pile of rubble. I guess we talked to um, the tall one. <laughs> Let us speak to the tall one, please. Tall one, yes. Tall one. Uh, was there anything of interest on the first floor? or You'd have to dig quite a ways to get to the bottom of it, but um, if you... Is there any particular place you'd like to... I'll let you just choose a, a spot since you got a low investigation. You can focus your attention on one spot. Um, I'm trying to find the map of the, the bottom floor. Where are you? Hey, Brian, can you get the map of the bottom? <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Thanks, Brian. <laughs> um, maybe that, like, uh, the back corner away from the kitchen where the counter in the office is yeah um yeah it seems like a good spot so so you're able to find you start search you you clear the rubble and you could dig down a ways and you're able to to find some things um one is the uh the log book that sits on the counter or even underneath the counter sometimes when you open up the pages are pretty pristine white but all the ink is gone huh. and uh you are able to find some keys missing if you you they had them all kind of um, hooked on the hooks in the back where the whole key box was. Rooms number two, four, six, and also one and eight are missing. What was that? One, one two, four, six, and eight. Mm -hmm. Huh. Uh, and... Wait, were two, four, and six tied together, or were three, four, and six tied together? Two, four, six. Two, four, six. Okay. Could it possibly be that those were the ones checked out? Um, your common sense would tell you that there were guests staying in those rooms, or that they'd at least rented the so rooms. So I have an alchemy jug. Um, could I say that I could do lemon juice? because <laughs> i do acid basic poison beer honey mayonnaise oil vinegar water fresh water salt and wine i do not know is this for the ink or something yes um <laughs> so Tell me more about this. What's this supposed to do? Is it supposed to reveal invisible ink or something? You've never done yeah. this? I've never done this. What the fuck, Brian? I was homeschooled. This was, not, thing. <laughs> this was you, not one of our projects. <laughs> you lightly coat a page in lemon juice and you hold it up to heat and it'll reveal invisible ink. Okay. Um, you can try it, but it's not going to work when you do because... You get the sense that the ink has been uh, incinerated by the fire. But the pages are fine. Yeah. It's... That's not how ink works, Brian. God damn Brian. I, listen, <laughs> I actually don't. Your whole school's showing. I actually don't, I don't know. know how paper works. I actually, the ink melted off. They I, don't, I don't know the physics of this. All I know is when my house burned down, <laughs> we opened up the books and the pages were pristine, but all the words were gone. And it freaked me out. Brian, <laughs> Brian those aren't books. Those are like Necronomicons. <laughs> those, are, those are fucking like phylacteries. You need to delete those, dude. <laughs> they were school <coughs> textbooks. You need... <laughs> <laughs> you need to stop burning your house down and start burning these books. <laughs> Fucking John. Um, 
Okay, so somehow this ink melted off of the paper. Sure. Um. <laughs> but that's the alchemy junk. Um, okay, I'm down to go investigate. I'm gonna, let's go shake down Daniel Blue Skit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just came Sean bald. He knows what he did. His home, he knew his homeschool was showing. <laughs> <laughs> I made up the story about my house burning down and finding the books. We know, so your Ryan. house didn't actually burn down? <laughs> it was all a hoax for this one moment. <laughs> I thought I might need it later, so I made up the story. <laughs> wow, like, Ryan. You're like, uh, yeah, my my wife just left me for a firefighter, and I lived under a bed. <laughs> <laughs> and my house burned down. Um, huh, weird. There's going to be all these moments in our brand new space podcast where I explain away these weird stupid sci-fi shit that I make up about planets and stuff based on my house burning down. <laughs> that sounds like you. <laughs> I love that. So uh, you go knock on Daniel Beluskin's door and it takes a while for him to answer. You wait probably a minute and he shows up and he, he opens the door a crack and you see he's got a nightcap on and stripey pajamas. Aww. Can oh. I bring a new character for this investigation? <laughs> <laughs> this is Dolby in. You can do whatever you want. I don't care. <laughs> Teofanus is not um, a mean person, but I sure want to bully this guy. <laughs> <laughs> you would. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. <clears throat> Um, I'm gonna, oh, wait, hold on, let me look up Prestidigitation. So here's what happened. So the fo the pages of the logbook were made of a white material with a burning point above 700 degrees Fahrenheit <laughs> and the fire burning the ink, <laughs> which so happened to have a flame point <sighs> under 700 degrees neither contained nor released carbon due to chemical reactions. Uh, that's what happened. Okay. okay. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> um, I'm going to use uh, prestidigitation to make a little badge um, and just say, yes, hello, sir. Um, we're with the Port Authority. We're investigating the recent... Uh, arson of the Dolby <laughs> Inn. Why did you say it like that? Oh, yes. One of the most frightening experiences I've ever encountered. Yes, we, we were, um... We were told that you were working uh, that night when it happened. Just wanted to ask you a few questions, that's all. Right, I was, um... Yes, we'd be happy to come in. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Okay. <laughs> Um, inside his house, you see kind of a living area where you could sit down. It's mostly, actually, it's pretty clean, and uh, it looks like for a bachelor, he uh, takes care of his house better than Eric does. Excuse me? My place <laughs> is very clean right now. <laughs> and the smoke alarms work. <laughs> <laughs> it was about three hours into my shift. We were expecting... Uh, late check-ins, and so Mr. Gomley stayed for longer to help out. Is there any reason why Mr. Gumley would go upstairs when there is a fire? Well, <clears throat> we heard the crackle of flames, and he went up to make sure everything was all right, and he told me that he would inform the guests if there was an emergency. After he'd been up just a short while, two of the rooms came running down in a panic. I let them out the front door and escorted them onto the park across the street, and I didn't see Mr. Gumley again after that. 
I tried mm. to go in and call for him, but by that time the entire upstairs was completely engulfed in flames. Do you remember which rooms ran out uh, with you? Hmm. Difficult to say because they checked in during the day and I'm the night auditor. But as far as I could recall... And he stinks for a bit and he says, Whenever I start my shift, I try to get a lay of the land and see what I'm in for for the night. I do remember two of the rooms had different names on them. Three of the rooms were under the same name, like one party had checked in. Do you remember what keys were missing when you clocked in for your shift? <clears throat> hmm. It would have been... I recall the three names being in an odd pattern they took two of the corner rooms and one in the center. Would have been two, four, and six. Hmm. And those weren't the ones that ran out with you? Mm. I'm afraid that I was <coughs> too distracted to ask who they were. Well, I... but... I'm sorry. Uh, go on. I can't say who they were. I don't know. It's possible that the logbook survived the flame. Ah, uh, yes. I'll, I'll <laughs> rummage around in my little pouch uh, and pull it out and go, Ha-ha! Does this help? And I'll, <laughs> I'll show him the book opened up to a random page. Pages wipe. Yes, that's the logbook. There's no entries in here. Hmm. So you're saying you didn't keep entries. That's interesting. <laughs> there were, when I started my shift, there were three quarters of the pages were filled. So the entries have been erased. Most interesting. <laughs> oh it could have been that the fire burned them off, apparently. Somehow, reef 700 degrees. Kyrene, you're being, you're speaking nonsense. Clearly, we're dealing with a very powerful wizard who erased all of the entries in the logbook. Okay, sure. Daniel. Oh God. Yes. Who who was working the day shift, the at the the front desk? Oh, M Mr. Beauregard came in this morning. And then after his shift uh, in the afternoon, it would have been Feather. And then after, for the evening, it was me. You have their addresses. I don't, no, I have no reason to. Oh, I do have, hmm. And he goes and he, uh, um, he pulls out his work pants he starts fishing through the pockets and he says, <clears throat> I've actually never used this. It's some sort of... Some sort of communication device for emergencies. It's, uh, it's just like a weird looking stone that he pulls out of his pocket. Huh. This should get a hold of Mr. Beauregard somehow. No, Eric, we're not killing him. <laughs> Jesus Christ, we can't kill everyone. I think you're wrong there. I think we very, very well could. <laughs> we can't be killing every person who's a piece of shit. I think you're wrong there. <laughs> yeah, I'll, <laughs> I'll lean over to Kyrene and say, uh, Casey or... Um, Feather may 
very well remember who checked in in those three rooms that uh, that were under one name. Uh, we may need to talk to them in the morning. That sounds like a good idea. And also, we may need to kill Dan. No. <laughs> no. We don't want to leave witnesses. No. <laughs> Okay, for once not kill innocent people. We're not. <laughs> We're killing witnesses. <laughs> That's killing innocent people. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> if you can get a hold of them, they would probably be the ones who... One of them must be the ones who checked these guests in, because I don't remember these guests from last night. We'll definitely have to talk to them. And not kill them. <laughs> I wouldn't dream of it. Um, I think that's all I have for my questioning, Daniel. Um, oh, was there any other staff on hand since Rupert had been gone? Um... Perhaps a a substitute chef we may we may um, speak with. He had a sous chef, but I never interacted with him because he was always gone before my shift started. Hmm. Fair enough. Um, just thought I would ask before we depart for the night. Uh, uh, Kyrene, do you have any further questions? Has any of the other ends been troublesome lately? Hmm. Well, not at night. I can't say for certain during the day, but the night crew is always quite pleasant. We night auditors have a code of conduct, you know. Hmm. Well, we'll have to ask others about that then. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> well, uh, thank you for your help, Daniel. I believe that's all we have for you uh, at this moment. Um, I'm assuming you would prefer to be reached during the night if we Ooh. do need to contact you again. Well, it's not like I have a job to go to, so it doesn't really matter at this point. Mm -hmm. I'll sure I'll come by you at some point to take your uh, fire alarms. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you for your help, uh, Daniel. You've been you've been very gracious. He nods and shows you to the door. Um, this stone is uh, pretty typical stone of far speech but you just uh i think you guys would know how to work it i don't know kyrene has been up in the mountains for so long <laughs> i was assuming it was a sending stone or sending stone yes i don't know okay. the difference well <laughs> whatever the name is um <clears throat> um I'll, I'll suggest to Kyrene that we reconvene in the morning. Okay. And um, I say that maybe just to kind of get a feel for the other two inns, one of us should stay at one of... One of us should stay at the Prestige, the other should stay at uh, Les Mulligans. Uh, I'll stay at the Prestige. Jolly good. <laughs> All burned. Stay at uh, less. Do, no, no burning, no killing. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll go to less mulligans. Okay. Um, 
not nearly as uh, ornate, ornate as the Dolby Inn ever was, but the Les Mulligans does have a pretty um, pretty good bar area. Very rustic. Um, a lot of the decor needs some upkeep, but you go in and check in, and they definitely have rooms for the night. And when the guy gives you your key and you go um, to your room... <laughs> The amenities are pretty worn, as you'd guess. They did; they're at least a decade old. And uh, uh, it, what would you like to do here? Anything particular? Um. For now, I'm just gonna sleep. Okay. The bed has a couple lumpy spots where the springs are pretty worn. <laughs> In general, it's um. Not it's not it doesn't have very good soundproofing, so you can see hear all the people at the bar just gallivanting and shouting and playing their games and drinking. And as for the prestige, the prestige. Ooh. Oh, that's only the dining area. The dining area <laughs> is just adjacent to the lobby. The lobby itself is just as ornate. And everything is brand new and expensive. And if you go up to the counter, the guy says, <clears throat> Welcome to the Prestige. Hi, uh, do you have rooms for the evening? Indeed we do. Um, and he looks you up and down and he says, uh, I should warn you, they're a bit pricey. How much? 300 gold a night. Wow, it's so expensive. <laughs> <laughs> he gives you, he checks you in and he gives you a key. Um, is there anything particular you, you would like to do with the prestige? Um... I kind of want to look around, like hang on the dining area a bit and like just watch him because I am a little suspect of him. <laughs> he, um, did you check in at night? What's yes. That? Okay. He, uh, he, he has some similarities to Daniel Beliskin. Um, he's not the same race or anything, but. He does seem kind of like he enjoys spending time to himself and he doesn't, he's not super sociable. Um, he seems pretty self entertaining. Uh, you can see some books stacked up like he brought them in. They're, they're not um, workbooks, they're more like leisure books. You, you would surmise he has plans to read those through the night to keep himself occupied. In the, in the dining area, as you walk through, you see some faces that you definitely recognize, some of which are. Um, politicians, uh, people who maybe like the chief, what is a equivalent of the chief of police would be there. Um, this is generally a hangout for people who are of a higher status. So some of them are iconic. Hmm. Uh, I'm going to go to the bar and get a drink and kind of just like people watch really. Okay. Why don't you, hmm, what do you want to roll? Perception? Um, sure. Or, so plus two. Or, in, or you could roll insight, I guess, if you wanted. That's the same thing. Doesn't matter. Ooh, 18. Ooh, I know who you see. You see, you see Jamit in good. She is sitting at the table, and she was one of the people who was at the uh, the courtroom during the kangaroo court for the railroad. Oh, my God. Oh, no. <laughs> what's, what's she up to? Let me look at these real quick. Hold on a second. <laughs>
Hmm. Why don't you roll an additional insight? Twelve. Just seeing her makes you wonder if these two events are connected. Makes she, sense. You don't recognize the people that she's... Well, I, actually, I'll let you roll a history check to see if you recognize the people she's talking to. Um, history... That's 16. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah, you do recognize one guy. And it is the... Um, it's the guy that ha that kind of oversees the building and planning of, of uh, businesses in Torrington. He's kind of, I don't know what the official title would be, but he, anytime you want to build a new building or start a new business, it's going to have to go through him. Mm. Oh, that's really suspect now. Um, so where would they be staying in the dining room from the diagram? They are in the bottom left, one of those four tables by all the barrels. Can I find a seat close enough so I can listen in? Um, as you wander around to just kind of with your listening, I think that you can start picking up on what they're saying if you just take a kitty corner table. Okay. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay. So, as you sit down and you start enjoying your drink, you can eavesdrop that they are talking about, um, well, it's it's a little hard to make out, but you definitely hear mention of the Dolby, and you also hear um, talk about um, the railroad, of course, and from what you can gather, oh, hold on a second, I need to roll something real quick. Of course you <laughs> Where's your pencil? Oh, there you are. I'll start taking notes. Uh, so what's the name of the lady? Uh, the lady's name is Jamet Ingood. Oh, I was so close to spelling her name correctly. <laughs> you remember her name listed on the uh, the note that you pulled from the dude, the dead dude on the dock, the mysterious man. <clears throat> Ooh. Ooh. I'm actually taking notes this time. Um. Um. And I think that you hear, you're listening in and you you hear the uh, conversation abruptly stop. And uh -oh. if you if you glance over, you see a couple of them are looking at you. Uh, <laughs> I am going to have a head down and just drink my drink. And from then I... on, from then on, you hear the conversation talk about general politics, um, the weather old comical stories about when they were in college, like just mundane, unimportant stuff. Hmm. I think that's my cue to leave. They know. <laughs> it's hard to say. You definitely heard them mention the Dolby Inn, but it, it could be because that's the news of the day. Like the Dolby Inn burned down and the whole town would be aware of it. Hmm. Can I think if I could just like disappear? I can't really sneak off, can I? Um, it would depend on what your abilities are and how well you roll, I think. Well, I have a plus eight to stealth. But. 
Um, so I'll so so you were at the table closest to the bar. They were kitty corner at the table closest to this um, corner of the walls where the where the circular wall meets the um, outside wall. Okay. If that helps. Yeah. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get up and like start walking out, and once I'm out of sight, I'm gonna go behind that wall thing because I'm three foot three. I think I'm able to hide pretty well from uh, behind that wall. <clears throat> okay, yeah, and it's not a busy night, so there's nobody at that table. Why don't you roll stealth check? Oh, sure. <laughs> uh, 27? <laughs> you can see their eyes or even feel their eyes following you. Um, and then I'll say that uh, you even exit. And then when you come back in on all fours or tuck and roll or whatever the hell you do, <laughs> you're able to kind Imagine of moves. get your back up against this wall and hear their conversation um, starts back to what they were talking about previously. Again, with mentions of the Dolby Inn and stuff and um, the railroad. And you hear them discussing, boy, how do I even want to do this? You don't know what became of the people from this court. And she says, I've no idea. It was one of the most bizarre experiences I've ever come across. All we know is that they frequented the Dolby Inn. And he says, <clears throat> well, we know that their headquarters are taken care of, but we don't know what became of them. We're going to have to start getting names and f putting people on these um, hmm, troublemakers. I don't even know what to call them, she says. All I remember is they refer to themselves as the Port Authority, and she, he says, Port Authority? Torrington doesn't have a Port Authority. Um, and the conversation goes on like this. The only clues that you pick up is that they probably, if there was arson, they probably had something to do with it. But shortly after that, they uh, start gathering their things. And you hear him say, I'll let them know what's going on. But I think that we should put people on these Port Authority members. Follow them around and figure out who they are and what they want. And she says, we've known that they've, um, they've had eyes on our, our plans. That's what the very fact that the sewer line exploded when we had our trade routes through there. <laughs> He says, I know. Um, and basically what you gather is they were shipping things through the sewers that exploded when you guys did the um, vampire adventure with uh, fucking, what's his name? Todd Von Zurovich. <laughs> <laughs> somebody blew up the, somebody blew up that so they couldn't travel through there. Eric. What? <laughs> We know it was you blowing shit up again. I, I don't think so. Maybe. And you have a feeling that now they, whoever it was, you know it wasn't your group, but they have a, they suspect it was probably the Port Authority since you guys opposed them so hard on the railroad. And uh, they're going to try and figure out who you are and they're going to try and um, put spies on you. Okay. They pick up their drinks, down what's left, uh, leave a check, and they walk out. All right. Uh, once I leave, I am going to head to bed. <laughs> Wake up the next morning. God, it's terrible. <laughs> the next morning, if you, uh, when you guys go to the Dolby Inn, you're going to find Diane there with the fire chief guy again. Well, I have some bad news. Oh. Did you find anything out last night? Well, we it's about, arson. We were just about to start an investigation of our own. How no, you, no, it, it's arson. How can you be sure? Well, I got listened to a very interesting conversation last night. Um, but we did some investigating and we found evidence of arson. Um 
There was... Go ahead. I'm sorry. Conversation? Yes, it was between Jim... Uh, Jim and Good. I had Jeanette for some reason on my list. And a building permit person? I thought about Jeanette, but it wasn't sexual enough. (laughs) God damn it, Ryan. Um, Yeah. There are... Let's see. I put... Can you roll a uh, can you roll perception real quick? Yeah. Oh shoot, that's not good. Uh, let's see. Perception eight. Where are you, Eric? Theo. <clears throat> Theo. Thank you. <laughs> Theo. Oh, Theo. Oh, no, don't do that. <laughs> oh. Um, I will be with them. Okay, then you roll perception too. I got them. Yeah, no, that's okay. Oh, uh, 10, actually. Um, as soon as she mentions the name jam it in good you notice this fire inspector's eyes grow wide as she continues talking (laughs) (laughs) um i'll just kind of quirk my eyebrow up kind of when i see him and uh continue listening do you have any idea who would have done this Well, from what they were saying, um, it sounded like they had something to do with it. Jam it in good. Hmm. I'll have to look into her. Well, the inspector here was just about to do some uh, investigating of his own. Um, I've already called the insurance and they said that they can cover the damages. I don't know how long it's going to take to clean the mess and get a whole new building restored and rebuilt, but this is definitely going to be a huge setback. It really is. I hope we get back soon. Were you able to find anything about Mr. Gumley? Not yet. We were going to go talk to the other two employees that were working that day. Other yes, Miss uh, Feather and Casey. Curry? Uh, Casey Bo- Curry Beauregard. I have their information somewhere. She opens up her uh, contacts and copies down, <laughs> hands you another paper. Sorry, that's my phone calling. <laughs> I'm trying to kill my phone, apparently. <laughs> Sorry, my phone fell. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. They're going to start picking through the rubble, and he's got some men with him, and he just starts ordering them around. Uh, I'm down to go and try and find uh, Curry, I guess. Um, When he starts walking away, I'm going to pull him to the side real quick go. We need to watch our backs. They're going to put spies on us. They know about Port Authority. Hmm. Interesting. And did you see the... um? I forget who that guy was that we were... That was with us talking. Oh, the fire inspector guy? Oh, the fire... Yeah. Okay. I didn't he's see... like 40 days late. <laughs> yes, the the fire inspector's face seemed very, very um, surprised when you mentioned Miss Jamet. I didn't see him with her last night, 
but we should be careful. Uh, he may then, be one of those tails. Maybe. We'll just have to watch our backs. And maybe we will get in a fight. Who knows? <laughs> we should kill him now. No, no. We don't need any more pressure on us as it is. We wait till he's alone. We could burn his body and make it look I... like he was part of the fire. <laughs> the... <laughs> no. That's not how it works. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm fine with actually going to go to Dr. Curry though okay. you barely knock on the door and it swings open and he's standing there um, with a plate of eggs in his hand and he goes hello oh wasn't expecting guests come on in I'll walk in I'll walk in as well what can I do you for More eggs, please. <laughs> you know, I was thinking to myself, I thought I want eggs, and I thought, I'll just finish off the entire carton. Good thing, because I didn't know I'd have guests. Here, have some. He hands you the pan and plates and stuff. Excellent. Thank you, good sir. Um, we're with the port... The th port... Um, <laughs> po poor man's bureau of... <laughs> Fire investigations. <laughs> what the fuck? That's the worst um, name ever. <laughs> Wait, Very um, subtle. Subtle. Hmm. I, I, I very obviously wink at Kyrie and say, uh, "We had a few questions about the the fire the other day at the inn." Yes, of course. Tragic accident. I feel terrible. Indeed, indeed. Um, yeah, um, primarily, uh, the day of the accident, uh, Mr. Baluskin had said that you were working the mornings, is that correct? Indeed. No, I always work the mornings, I prefer that shift. Bit of a morning person, I am. Also, Very strange. everybody yeah. checks in Very in the strange. afternoons, and I don't like dealing with the guests, so. Hmm. Um, so you're not the one we need to talk to. Got it. <laughs> yes. You had no people check in during your shift, then? Hmm. What day was that? Hmm. You know, there was one fellow. Tuesday. An unusual oh. occasion, there was one fellow. He wanted an early morning check-in. Mm -hmm. And he wanted three rooms. Apparently, he was going to have some family stay with him or some such. I don't know. I don't ask questions. I just got him his rooms. Name was, uh, hmm. Norbert Dolvin. Uh, You're going to have to speak up, sir. I can't understand mumbling. Hmm. <laughs> 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 Norbert. That's what it was. Norbert. Jackson Norbert. Jackson Norbert. Interesting. Interesting. Do you remember anything about this Norbert fellow? Quite an unpleasant fellow. Didn't like dealing with him. Very demanding. I asked him who would be staying. He was very private. He wouldn't tell me what he was going on. He just wanted three rooms and, uh... <clears throat> he was a short fellow. Portly, if I short, recall. Short, like, perhaps he was a halfling, or... No, no, just a mandlet. Hmm, okay. <laughs> Five not. I'll write that down. Mandlet. Got it. May have even been 5'11". <laughs> gotcha. So it's Brian. Okay. Was this fellow... Was this fellow bald? Did you like I have a beard. I am 6'2". Uh-huh. We've had okay, this man before. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta... I'm just gonna stand up for our viewers real quick. 
Oh no, I got the stream open. Hi, me in the future. Yeah, right. <laughs> As you can see, I reached the top of the screen. Mm -hmm. Wow. Sure. Let me just. All right. Um, my cord hit, uh, my desk leg, and it went, <laughs> chwing! You know, there was another odd thing about this fellow. He only had one bag of luggage, but he had, he demanded all three keys. Hmm, well, is that that odd if he was requesting three rooms? I mean... Oftentimes, if, I... if people check what? in and get multiple rooms, they just assume that their partners, whoever else is going to be in the party, would come in and get their keys and check in, but he took all three of them himself. That is a little weird. Perhaps he was meeting his family later on, but I'll... When I say this, I give Kyrene a, a knowing look, like, oh. <laughs> Hmm. Maybe. I give him a very obvious wink. <laughs> He's just sitting there eating his <laughs> eggs, staring at you. <laughs> um. Oh. Uh, well then, Mister uh, uh, Beauregard. The rest of your shift passed without any sort of um, <laughs> any sort of problem. Hold on, I'm putting your snap on blast. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, the rest of my shift went as normal. Um, nothing unusual about it, really. Hmm. Um, Mr. Beauregard, uh, one final question, from me at least. Um, we have, uh, spoken with Mr. Beluskin, um, we've spoken with Miss Dolby, we've obviously been in contact with Mr. Rupert, um, other than Senior Gumley, uh, and Miss Father, were there any other employees available? I know there was a maid's closet, it seems... Strange, since you don't seem to have a maid listed. Oh, yes, Amber. Mmm. 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 I see. Um, do you have her contact information? I do. Normally, I keep it at the inn. Hmm. Where would I put it in the house? He starts rummaging through uh, papers near the kitchen, and then he goes into his room, and finally he comes out and he says, Ah, oh, I have it here! And he hands it to you, and uh, it's just got her name and address written down, but, I mean, I don't know. Depends on uh, how well you know terribly, the town. Terribly help you... T ah. Terribly <laughs> helpful. Thank you, sir. Um... That's all I have to ask you about, Kyrene. I don't have any questions. Excellent. Um, thank you for the uh, meal, sir. Quite appreciated. Thanks, very good. Very fluffy. He nods, but he doesn't get up to see you to the door or anything. Mm. Oh, this is the perfect time to rob him. Let's <laughs> go upstairs. <laughs> no. Um, when we, when we leave, like, I, I turn to Kyrene and say, hmm, so what are you thinking? Um, we know the names of, or the name that at least this person gave when they checked in. Um, do you think we should talk to Feather at all? Um, see if she's seen anything, or maybe this Amber person? Hmm. 
both seem good. I'm kind of curious with the with Amber to see about those towels. <clears throat> yes, that was my thought as well. Yeah. By the way, when those two saw me at the end, um, they switched their combo immediately to like normal talk, like politics and weather. Hmm. They also said that the headquarters were taken care of. Headquarters were taken care of. Very strange. Um, I wonder if that means it's well defended or if it's already gone. Uh, they're talking about our, apparently, we have, that was our headquarters. Oh, our headquarters. Oh, mm -hmm. I see. Mm. And the Port Authority doesn't exist in town. True. And they know about the sewers exploding. I'm guessing that they think the Dolby Inn was our headquarters. Yeah. Hmm. Well, perhaps we can throw a bit of a reopening party for Miss uh, Dolby once it reopens. Oh, as for a, sure. As a, a thanks for... <laughs> and I'll start speaking really loudly at this point for, <laughs> for being the official headquarters <laughs> of the Port Authority. And I, <laughs> I shoot Kyrene away. God damn it. <laughs> So what we need more is a target on our back. Uh, under my breath, then, I, I kind of go, I, I'm trying to lure them out, see if they might make a move now. Um, oh. Worst case scenario, uh, we already had targets on our heads. Um, best case, we might sniff further down this rabbit trail, as it were. Apparently, they're going to try to figure out more about us, too, like names and all that. <laughs> Good luck finding out names. I've got right? four hundred thousand characters. <laughs> I'm from a monastery. I don't go out much. <laughs> Kyrene, no last name. <laughs> I'm just kind of last name, but it's not actually her last name. <laughs> Ky Kyrene, last name. Interesting. It's a Kyrene Shunkashu. Whoa, I never knew this. Shunkshu? Shunkshu. Like. Because she had a um, nursemaid, I think that's the name of it, who um, basically raised her. Uh, she was a Mima Shunkshu. Aw, Mima. And she always got called a uh, little Shunkshu, and it pissed her off every single time. <laughs> So she was a rebellious little child. That's why you're still so high. All this time, never knew. Yep. I know I should never forget her actual last name. Her parents are still alive. Wow. But to be fair, Brian, I'll bet you can't name my character's first name right now. <laughs> dual pod. <laughs> <laughs> Pod. That was three weeks ago, Brian. <laughs> Two weeks ago, Brian. I just assume I assume every single one of your characters must be one of the jewel pods. <laughs> if it's not if it's not Dicky Butt stuff, it's, it's a jewel pod. <laughs> um <laughs> with uh with Kyrene's confirmation though, I'm down to go check out Amber's Oh, for sure. Amber's place. Um, Before Feathers, at least. Her place. So, when you, yeah, you go down a few roads, and uh, her place is going to be considerably more modest than Curry's. Curry's was a little bit extravagant. Um, and you find her working in the yard. She's kind of tending to some plants in the garden. Hmm. Hmm. She does not look happy to see you. Water. That's not surprising. <clears throat> Hello there. What is it? Um, Amber, uh, hot, hot water. Is that right? That is me. 
Ah, uh, hello. Um, I'm with the Port Authority. <laughs> oh my God! Don't stop doing that. <laughs> Um, I just had a few questions about the other day when the, um, unfortunate accident of the inn burning down occurred. Uh, hoping you might be able to help us out a bit. It gave me much more time to work in my garden, but I have no money now. Hmm. Mm. Um... Well, uh, please feel free to continue gardening. Um shouldn't stop our, our questions. We don't need to step inside or anything. Um, although I would like some tea. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, yes, miss. Um, just a few questions about... I didn't write their names down. Shit. What was... <laughs> Quick, Kyrene, what was their names? <laughs> The people who... The people who checked in, yeah. Um, Norbert Jackson. Norbert Jackson. All I could remember was two first names. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, Miss Hotwater. I wrote last name, first name, by the way. Just to let you know. <laughs> Wait, is his name Jackson Norbert? Norbert? Yeah. Okay. Jackson. Uh. Brian, can I keep an eye out for uh, spies? Okay. Brian, I dropped a dice. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. Oh, there it is. Actually, I would also like to be keeping an eye out since I keep calling attention to our <laughs> 18. That's probably better than mine, but yeah, it is. Um, you definitely <laughs> see people walking by, but you don't notice anybody that uh, is lingering. Really, with 18? You don't see anybody. Okay. <laughs> and I especially don't notice anybody. <laughs> If anything fishy happens, they'll keep you up to date. But, uh, yeah, I'll be like, um, <clears throat> yes, uh, the, the night of the fire, um, we, we've spoken with Mr. Beluskin and Mr. Beauregard already. Um, just doing a few follow-up questions. Do you remember, uh, uh, Having any unusual housekeeping to do that that day, I suppose. Unusual? Yes, perhaps some... Um, I don't know. Um, a severe spill or perhaps um, some sort of... Oh, I don't know. Um, like special requests from guests uh, for rooms that they checked in. She... Uh, she tears into the dirt with her um, spade and then um, stops and thinks for a second. She says, There was an irritating man. Is he short and portly? Yes. Hey. Yeah. Ooh, good thing she put pants on. <laughs> it's my roommate, it's fine. Um, I never close anyways. <laughs> <laughs> yes, about this short round. He came to me three times. From every time, he would have a different uh, facial hair and say that he needed more towels for his room. And he say, one room, then another room, then another room, acting with different accents. And he think, I don't know, it's the same man every time. And you're quite certain this was a different man each time. Or, I'm sorry, 
quite certain this was the same man each time, not different man. He no even change his clothes. All he do is put on new facial hair. Sounds like a bad spy. <laughs> hmm. Interesting. Um. I just could give you him... give us details about this man at all? What he looked like, uh, sans facial hair, preferred. I almost, or at least irregarding that. I almost look him in his eyes, and he's very fat, and he wore. Nice clothes, like he was on, he come from a job, a very important, and he, had bulbous nose. Bit reddish, or purple, like he drink a lot. Hmm. What the? What was his hair like? Ordinary brown, but unkempt. Stick out on the sides. <clears throat> hmm. And for the facial hair... What was that like? First, curly mustache, then pointy beard, and then clean shaven. I lean over to Kyrene and go, I've always known arsonists to have soft chins. <laughs> uh, excuse me, miss. <laughs> Did he have a very soft chin when he was when he was clean shaven? <clears throat> I know pet it. I don't know. Uh, uh, no, no, but like very, very defined chin, or did it sort of melt into his throat? You know. Yes, soft chin. Two soft chins. Two soft chin. Excellent. I, I give a very knowing look to Kyrie. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll pull Kyrene off to the side a little bit and go, well, I think that was much more helpful than I expected. Um, do you have any further questions for this um, surly woman? What I could think of. Yes, I'm also out of questions for her. Mm. Hmm. Do you think we should start the search for this strange, soft-chinned man? Or should we go and talk to Feather as well? Mm. It might be worth trying to go find... I don't know what info Feather can give us. What was the all the rooms that were missing keys? It was two, four, six. Uh, one and eight as well. However, I believe Mr. Beauregard had mentioned that at the very least one had run out with him. I believe eight had it as well. Although I don't remember exactly. Mm. Well, he said there's also way of rivals coming too. But we know that we know two, four, and six were not the late arrivals. Um, so perhaps we could confirm with Feather uh, who had arrived late. That's probably a good idea. Yes. All right. <clears throat> 
I'll turn back to Amber and go, uh, well, Miss Amber, um, I must say, I greatly thank you for the input that you have given us. Um, hopefully we will not have to speak again. However, uh, if we do return, um, I, I trust you will be just as helpful for the <clears throat> Port Authority. <laughs> oh, fucking guy uh, killed. And, uh, as you have been, truly you are a magnificent person and hopefully your garden is as <clears throat> plentiful as your personality. <laughs> and I give her a wide smile and a deep bow. <laughs> She frowns at you and hacks at her dirt again. All right, little boy, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> we depart to Miss Feather 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 I want to say she is bottom in her name, but I can't remember. Oh no. Uh, Feather Highborn. What's her face? <laughs> yeah. What's her face? What's her name? <clears throat> when you knock on her door, it takes a long time for her to answer. And you hear kind of a thump from upstairs and then a thump, thump, thump from coming downstairs. And then finally the door opens and you see her standing in uh, probably not entirely wholesome nightgown and she's got a night eyes whatever those night cap over her eyes um pushed up to her forehead sleeping mask yeah sleeping mask yes 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 and she says uh <clears throat> oh, what is it why are you here you do understand it's morning right yes i can tell by the blinding sun were you drinking? Only between the hours of 7 p.m. and 4 a.m. Mm. Prime drinking hours, <laughs> miss. Um, perhaps we could have in, uh, enter and uh, have a bit of the hair of the dog. <laughs> she just she doesn't even respond. She just opens. Th the door all the way and walks into her house and she goes to the kitchen and pops a cork and starts pouring herself a drink. Um, the whole time you can see she's kind of fidgeting and uh, with her hands and everything and she uh, gets out two more glasses and slides them over to you and slides the bottle and then just starts chugging hers. I assume this is regarding the fire Yes. You're muted, Eric, by the way. I, I know. I expected her to respond there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. Um, Miss uh, Highborn? Am I saying that correctly? Highborn? Yes, I'm the highborn family. <clears throat> yes. Um, I am uh, Teofanus. This is Kyrene. We are with the uh, <clears throat> Port Authority. We're inside. Uh, <laughs> yes, you're all right. Sorry. And quite loudly, I will go, Port Authority. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> um, she's you can see her cringe and she goes must you shout she like puts her hand to her temple I agree shouting is not best right now I kind of lean on one hand and go shout no of course not uh, no need for that um <clears throat> just a few questions for you if you don't mind um we we have spoken with um, Mr. Beauregard and Beluskin, as well as the housekeeper, um, 
Amber Hot Water. Um, just wanted to confirm a few uh, facts with you. Um, was there anyone who checked in during your shift? <sighs> she sighs and takes another drink. Then she taps her hand and she says, Yes, I had two check-ins that day. Do you remember what rooms they were? Uh, hmm. Yes. Where were they? Our first floor, our first room, and you know, now that I think of it, it was the very first and the very last. One and eight. Okay. Interesting. Uh, what time did you work at? I started my shift at 1 p.m. So you're at p.m. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, did you happen to have any... Uh, interaction with a man, uh, one Mr. Norbert Bert Jackson or Jackson Norbert, Norbert. Uh, Jackson Norbert, yeah. yes, uh, Jackson Norbert. Yes, unseemly fellow, the Norbert party had three rooms, if I recall. He kept coming down for amenities and insisting that he needed more drinks and, um, build it to his room, but of course he never paid, being that the inn burned down. <clears throat> um. <clears throat> Very rude fellow. You sound very rude. He droned on about how the Prestige was a much better hotel, and I told him, if you like it better, you may as well just stay there. But he insisted that this is where he wanted his rooms, and he just wanted, he expected the service that they give at the Prestige. And I told him, well, they pay more at the Prestige, but he, he wouldn't listen. Hmm. Sounds very entitled. Seemed that way, yes. Never did see his other party members. Only him. Did he mention any business he might have during the day? Or why he was staying in Torrington? Why he wanted the Dolby Inn? Hmm. No, I don't recall. I told him if he liked the prestige, he says stay at the prestige, but he just wanted the amenities of the prestige and the service of the prestige for the price of the Dolby Inn. Bit of a bit of a stingy fellow, I would I would almost wonder if he's been kicked out of the prestige and maybe just downgraded to us because he wouldn't pay his bills or something, I don't know. It sounds like it. <laughs> Tempting. <laughs> I agree. Let's kill her. <laughs> no. <laughs> what else could be tempting about this situation? Um, hmm. Did you ever see him with anyone else from town? Hmm. No, not that I recall. He spoke with me and he spoke with the sous chef and I remember him having a long conversation with Mr. Gumley. That's all that I recall. I don't remember him having mm -hmm. any guests over. Mm 
Do you remember anything about what uh, he and Mr. Gumley were speaking about? Did you overhear anything? No, I was busy with my crosswords. <laughs> hmm. I do remember the conversation got a bit heated at one point, and I had just assumed it was because he was a very rude person. I didn't blame Gumley one bit. Do you know the name of the sous chef? Oh, uh... <laughs> Mr. Uh... <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy! <laughs> oh. Jimmy John! Sue! Sue? Unusual name to hear of a boy named Sue, but that's what his oh name is. Oh my fucking god, Brian! <laughs> he sounds like a real son of a bitch. Do you, know can... Do you know where we may be able to contact him? Well... Mm... No. Chef Rupert would know. Oh wait, yes, I do have... I forgot, I'm the concierge. I have everyone's contact information. How convenient. Oh, weird. She pulls out a I huge... forgot that. <laughs> she pulls out a massive phone book-sized binder <laughs> and plops it on the counter. Sorry, I had a late night last night. She flips it up and uh, <laughs> she says... I'll, so, I'll start refilling her drink while she does <laughs> She jots down his name and address. <clears throat> okay. Right. Yes. I heard she jots down his name and address and says, and then nothing else. I didn't say as says. She just slides it over to you and takes the drink you poured her. Thank you so much for your help. Indeed. And if you ever have any reason to, oh, I don't know, call for the port of <laughs> the oh we, don't, we don't do it inside the house. Um, please do not hesitate to reach us at this address, and <laughs> I'll just write down the address of the Dolby. <laughs> This is our sort of informal headquarters. <laughs> I don't think she even looks at it. She just takes the paper and takes another drink and stares at you. Very well, then. We'll leave you with uh, your drink. <laughs> Come on, dear. will bow at um at feather and, and walk out <clears throat> uh, and when we get outside I I kind of lean over Kyrene and say um <clears throat> it's starting to seem more and more as if... Mr. Gumley had a hand in all this, don't you suppose? <laughs> yeah, it does seem like that. I'm very curious about the sous chef, too. Yeah, yes, indeed. Mm, I, I wonder if anyone has checked where Mr. Gumley lives. The uh, fire inspectors of this town seem rather lackluster in their investigations. Yeah, I noticed that too. And they seem keen that he died in the fire. Yes, they seemed very insistent about that, which considering there is no body <laughs> um, seems a bit odd to me. Um... Do you think we should go have a visit? I th think we should. If nothing else, um, we can always stop by there on the way to uh, Miss What's-Her-Nuts. The sous chef? 
Yes. Sue? Sue. Sue what's her nuts? A boy named Sue? Uh, so we make our way to Gumley's house. Oh, you're going to Gumley's house. Okay. Interesting. Um, how do you want to proceed? You definitely, I mean, you find it, but it's just <clears throat> sitting there with the door closed. I'm going to knock on the door. You knock? I'm, I'm going to be kind of circling around to the back. Okay. Just to make sure. It's a small house, obviously. You uh, you knock and you wait at the door as um, Teo te 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 yeah. is walking around back, and you wait and you wait. Nothing happens. Um, Teo, uh, you peer in through the windows, and none of the lights are on. And I think... Hmm... Uh, real quick, is there a back door at all? There is. It's also closed. Okay. Why don't you guys... Why don't you guys roll perceptions? So much perception. Uh, I don't know where my D20s went. Uh oh. I got a four. I don't see shit. I really? Oh, wait. No. Okay. I know where one of my d20s went. Yeah, it's not much better. I think that's a 10. Perception? Yeah. Uh, 12. I'm sorry. What was yours, Kyrene? Four. Oof. Kyrene, you're just standing there waiting at the door. Um, Teo, as you're walking around looking in these windows, you see a dark figure move inside, and it looks pretty large. Um, it goes from one corner to the next, so you just see it pass across a hallway, but you don't get a good, clear look at what it was because it's kind of out of the corner of your eye. But it was a large figure? Yeah, bigger than a human. Hmm, okay. Um, I'm just going to finish my walkabout of the house, uh, kind of circle back to the front. <clears throat> and then I'm going to cast Message to Kyrene as I, I kind of knock on the front door again and say, um, <clears throat> there's something in there. But it was something large. Um, best to be ready for the worst. Mm -hmm. All right, you probably might have to get up late. I am going to ready myself for an attack. Um, I will start to knock again and go, excuse me, Mr. Gumley, uh, if there's, or Gumley residence, is there anything, uh, if anyone is home, uh, um, would you please open your door? We have some questions. It's the part authority. <laughs> you hear a tremendous thunk against the door. Um, um, <coughs> does, does it sound like? <laughs> does it sound like something big hit it, or just like one thing hit it very hard? Something big hit it. it because something big hit. Okay. As far as you can tell, the funk came from probably up higher above your head, close to the top of the door. Hmm. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't like a, you know, like a bullet or something hit it. 
it it that, sounded that like a thunk. it sounded like a large weight. Hmm. It could be just someone like just pounding on the door with their hand. It wasn't a thunk thunk. It was more just like a kaboom. Um, I am going to tap Kyrene on the shoulder and cast haste as well as twin spelling it onto myself and just say it looks like it's all or nothing at this point and I'm going to try and pull open the door. Well, it's it's uh, two extra attacks, right? Uh, just one. It's one extra attack per action. Sorry, one extra action per round each action can be either hide dash disengage or one attack okay it's a front door so it would open inward oh it opens inward interesting um then i'll just kind of try and throw it open okay um it's locked. Do you, how are you gonna? It's locked. You could try and oh, force it. It's or the front door. <laughs> um. So I just kind of like throw my weight against it and notice that it's locked and go. That was awkward. Um. <laughs> and then I'll cast. God, I do not have a lot of good spells for this. Uh, I'm just going to run around, actually, to the back door and try and open that. I'm going to throw my weight around. <laughs> <laughs> is that one locked too, uh, Brian? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of course it is. Okay. Um, oh, also, my movement speed is doubled, as well as Kyrene's right now okay because of haste and a plus two to ac so <laughs> i'll run around it throw my weight against that other door um and then if that's locked as well i'll sprint around to the front with a dash action and go through the window <laughs> <laughs> dive right then yeah <laughs> Here we go. Um, yeah, unless unless Kyrene beats me to it, I will dive through the window first. Uh, I'll dive through the other window. Okay. Okay. We're both diving through a window. Can you guys roll history checks real quick? No. Oh my god, this starts failing me. Five. God. Four. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I actually rolled a d12 that time. Whoops. Oh, <laughs> that'll do it. I was trying to figure out better dice. Uh, yeah, I forgot five. Um, are you gonna just, uh, I, I, I don't think you'd have any problems smashing through these windows. Are you just okay. going to go right through and, or what? Like, are you throwing something through them and then waiting to see what happens? Are you diving right through them or what are you doing? Um. And, hmm. and also who smashes theirs? Do you smash them at different times or same time? I think it'd be both kind of diving through. Oh, I was going to start trying with my elbow because I have my robe on, so that protect me from the glass. And now I'll dive through. Okay, so Kyrene, Kyrene is the smarter one of us who <laughs> smashes the window. I just dive through the window. Okay, why don't you do dicks, uh, uh, acrobatics? Dirty 20. Not as good. 10. Dirty. Um, 
So, uh, yeah, so Kyrene goes through nimbly and she just uh, has her cloak to protect her and she falls on the other side of this window in the room. Um, Theo, <laughs> Teo, you uh, definitely, you, you go in just as gracefully. You land inside the room and you look down and there's a huge gash on your arm that's bleeding. <laughs> You don't you don't take any actual damage, but you are uh, bleeding all over this carpet. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> Kyrene, you come to your standing position, and you look up, and through the door of this room, you see the giant head of a pteranodon appear and go. Ah! Oh, fuck. <laughs> I think that's where we'll end it. <laughs> Next week on Dolby In, <laughs> will does. our heroes be able to vanquish the Pteranodon? <laughs> I didn't. I should have known better. I didn't realize how deep your investigation and thorough your investigation would go. I thought you might stop at a couple places and be yeah. like, but you know, you talk to every single person. Of course, Brian. I love looking into crimes. <laughs> I know how to go through, investigate crime. I love the idea that Brian was just like. All right, for this entire episode, they'll check out one place and then say fuck it and go somewhere else. And then I'll have to figure something else out. Also, have you noticed how much we've gotten done between the two of us without the others? Right. You guys were super thorough. There was no, uh, there was no, uh, what was his name? No Mortimer, Mortimer to get in the way. God. <laughs> I swear, he does so much sometimes. Or Cliff Clifton. <laughs> God. <laughs>